So I'm here in Park Arcadia, which is uh, about an hour or so away from Warsaw by train in the, uh, the woods for Voidship. And this place is amazing. Uh, the, you basically have a whole load of architecture that was put up at the, at the end of like, the, the 18th century, so like late kind of 1700s. Uh, by, um, God, she has a tough name, so I will tell you in the video, but this rich duchess, uh, this place is an absolutely incredible place to visit, like a gold mine. So I hope you enjoy, and yeah, stay tuned. Dzień dobry. Welcome to a Brit in Poland. This channel has a number of missions, the main one to create a video for every place on this list. Though I could use your help. The help could be in a number of forms. You could like my video, you could subscribe to my channel, you could follow me on Facebook or Instagram, or you could donate to my Patronite account. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoy the video. So, as you can see, this is very much in the centre of Poland. I was surprised it was part of the Wydra Voyager, but here we go. Uh, taking the train, you can go from Warsaw to Mishwakow Station, and from there it's about a kilometre or so. So the name I couldn't remember before was Helena Radziwilonna. Oh God, probably butchered that. Uh, she was actually um, a duchess and the lover to the last king of Poland. And she basically bought this area called Wupia and renamed it to Arcadia. Arcadia being the Greeks' idyllic home for shepherds. So, very classical. The park is absolutely stuffed full of little monuments and statues. Uh, this was an amphitheater, for example. And a lot of the buildings here are thanks to architects such as Shimon uh, Bugamil Zug and Henrik Itar. And here is the Sibyl's Grotto, uh, which is a starting point for pondering the mystery of life and death. And behind that is the Gothic Cottage, built in 1795. It contained a chapel. Uh, it had a symbolic knight's home, which was made in honour of her son, Michael Gedeon, who was one of Napoleon's generals. And, well, <laughs> yeah, it, it was... Um, it was the first like site uh, that we saw uh, from our like uh, entry point, but boy, uh, was it impressive! Um, lots of little details hidden in these buildings. Random stone archway because why not? And I guess a small bird bath maybe. <laughs> uh, the next proper building we get to is the stone arch, built in 1784. And it was built as like a, a frame for viewing the Temple of Diana, which we will get to, and was part of establishing a garden. And Bulgrave's house is based on the, the High Priest Shrine, which we will get to. Neo-Gothic and quite a few like surviving wall decorations. And it was elevated in the mid-19th century by Franciszek Lancy. I don't really know who that is. But there you go. And moving on, I think looks like a, this used to be a small well, perhaps. And a random column. I don't know if any of these were actually kind of stolen from uh, maybe ancient Greece. I'm not sure. Uh, the Temple of Diana was built in 1783, uh, made to classical proportions. Inside the temple, which sadly you can't access right now due to renovations, is a vestibule, a Etruscan chamber, the Oval's bedroom, and an elegant hall called the Pantheon. Quite frustrating that we couldn't see inside. But you have like these uh, sphinxes uh, by the water and a kind of sarcophagus outside, so 
again touching a lot of kind of Greek and Egyptian uh, style in here. So as you can tell, a lot of these structures had a very kind of classical ancient design in mind. Next, we get to the aqueduct. So this was originally built in 1784 based on the Roman design and was a bridge across uh, the Wupia River. But it was demolished in 1864, finally rebuilt in 1951, but based on the original design and pretty cool because you don't really get many uh, Roman buildings in Poland. Next, we have the High Priest Shrine built in 1783. And like a few of the structures here, it was actually deliberately built as a ruin. Uh, it was decorated with sculptures taken by uh, from the nearby Wuvitz. And there is a viewing platform that I don't know how accessible that is. There's a cafe inside now. And it's noted as one of the most original garden pavilions built on Polish soil at that time. So again, another building with so much amazing kind of architectural detail and just, yeah, you have to kind of look around and keep an, an eye out because, wow, just look at the amount of detail that has been preserved here. I mean, it's worth noting that uh, this entire kind of park is now owned by the, the Museum of Warsaw and it, it did kind of pass through a few hands over the years. Now the circus, so this was built, uh, well, modelled on a Roman circus, but only the the obelisk and these two uh, finishing stones, which you'll see, actually survive. Uh, the materials to build this came from the Emperor of Russia, Alexander I. And of course, it was a much larger area. Uh, the girls in the group particularly had fun with this particular monument. Um, I won't go into reasons why here. And finally, the sepulchre on Poplar Island is basically a tomb modelled on the, uh, the tomb of Jean-Jacques Rousseau, who I should probably know who that is, but it was a nice, again, random little sculpture. But I hope you enjoyed this short video about Arcadia, a lovely park, quite easy to get to from Warsaw, and a nice day out, really. I mean, we probably spent two hours or so going around the park. It's not the biggest park in the world, but it's just full of interesting details. So I really recommend it. It is certainly one of those hidden gems of Poland. But thank you very much for watching. Uh, stay tuned for more amazing sights around this amazing country. Dozer Bichenia.